Hello and welcome to the PC Building Simulator Deep Dive series, where we will cover a range of different in-game features in detail. This series was created to provide you with the tips and tricks you need to help you get through the more complex parts of the game. I am your host, Big Jake901, and you can find more of my content over at youtube.com forward slash Big Jake901 or by clicking the link down in the description. In the last episode, we covered a custom water cooling. If you missed that episode and you're interested in learning how to water cool in the game, you should go check that episode out. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to overclock RAM. But before that, I get a lot of questions on my channel wanting to know how I have screws automatically screw in or how I have cables automatically connect. This is done by using in-game tools, and today I'm going to show you how to access those tools. First off, here in FreeBuild, to access the tools, you'll need to push the escape key to bring up the in-game menu. Once in the menu, you will need to click on FreeBuild Options, which will open up a new menu with all of the tools listed. You just need to put a check mark next to the tool you want turned on and remove a check mark to disable the tool you don't want on. These tools are pretty self-explanatory just by their name, but I will quickly go through what each one does. Up here at the top, the Auto Connect tool automatically connects the cables to the back of the computer. The next one, the Quick Screw tool, makes screwing in screws much faster. The Quick Cable tool connects cables by clicking on the component you are cabling instead of clicking on the power supply and the component. My absolute favorite is the Auto Standoff tool, which does just what its name says, it puts in the standoffs for you. Then there's the Faster Installation Upgrade, which installs components a bit faster. The auto screw tool is there for when you just can't be bothered to put in screws. And finally, the auto cable tool, which automatically connects cables as you install your components. There's all the tools. Join me over in career mode, and I will show you how to access the tools over there. Welcome to my repair shop in career mode, Jake's Reputable PC Repairs. Tools work a little bit differently in career mode. Before you can use a specific tool in career mode, you will need to purchase them from the shop. So let's hop onto the computer here. Let's open up the shop. Scroll down to tools and software, and all the tools can be purchased here. Here's auto connect, quick screw, quick cable, auto standoff, which is one of my favorites, faster installation upgrade, auto screw tool, and the auto cable tool. Once you've purchased your tool, you'll need to do basically the same thing that we did in FreeBuild. You'll need to push the escape key. You'll go to Tool Upgrade Options. And from there, you'll be able to either put a check mark beside or remove a check mark to enable or disable the tools that you want to use in career mode. That's about all there is to say about tools. Join me back over in FreeBuild and I will show you how to overclock RAM. Welcome back to free build mode. Let's talk about RAM overclocking. As far as I know, in the game, there are two ways to overclock your RAM. One is incredibly simple, and I'm going to show you that one first. So let's go over here to this PC. It's off. We've already got some RAM installed in it. Let's hop over here. Let's power it on, and let's hold down the delete or the F2 button to enter the BIOS. Once we're in the BIOS, we need to head over here to RAM OC. And all we need to do is turn on XMP. XMP is overclocking, but there are a few caveats that go along with it. First caveat is if you overclock your CPU and you overclock the base clock, so let's bump this up. One, we can no longer turn on XMP. So if you do a base clock overclock, XMP will not work anymore. Secondly, XMP will only work up to the maximum either RAM speed that you purchased. So I this RAM here is 3600 megahertz RAM. This is what I purchased. And this motherboard will support 3600 megahertz RAM. But let's say you get a motherboard that only supports 3600 megahertz RAM and you buy 4800 megahertz RAM. When you turn on XMP, the fastest speed you're going to hit is going to be 3600 megahertz because it is dictated by the motherboard. 
So can you buy the fastest RAM in the game, stick it in any motherboard, and turn on XMP? Absolutely. Are you wasting money? Probably so. Because you need to make sure that you purchase RAM that at least matches the speed that the motherboard can accept. Now, there are some motherboards in the game that will accept up to 5,000 megahertz RAM. There isn't RAM in the game that goes up to 5,000 megahertz currently. Currently, we're maxed at 4,800 megahertz. So if you wanted to hit 5,000 megahertz, you could buy 4,800 megahertz RAM and then manually overclock it to 5,000 megahertz. Now, that's pretty much all there is to overclocking with XMP. And for those who say that XMP isn't overclocking, it is because DDR4, its baseline speed is 2,133 megahertz. So anything over that is overclocked. So yes, turning on XMP is overclocking your RAM. Now let's talk about manually overclocking your RAM. So let's say, let's go over here to the CPU. Let's say that you have overclocked your base clock. You're pushing that CPU as far as you possibly can, and you now want to push your RAM as far as you can. To do that, you are going to have to manually overclock. So I know that this particular processor in this machine cannot handle me turning up the base clock, so I'm going to turn it back down, but that should not really matter. When you manually overclock your RAM, you want to make sure that you overclock your CPU first, push it as far as it'll go if that's what you want to do. If you're going to overclock your CPU, overclock it before you start overclocking your RAM. So I'm going to leave my CPU alone. I'm going to come back over here to RAM OC and I'm going to start overclocking. So I know that this RAM was rated at 3600 megahertz. So I'm going to start there. Also with the RAM voltage, this will go way on up all the way up to two volts. Now you can easily fry RAM at two volts. However, I haven't had any problems around 1.8 volts and even sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes 1.85. If you're in free build, it's no big deal if you fry RAM, it's free. Crank that RAM voltage up, see what it'll handle and go from there. If you're in career mode, however, that can start getting expensive. So I would definitely recommend starting off around 1.8 volts and then turning it up as you see fit to not fry your RAM. So I know this RAM was rated for 3600 megahertz. So I'm actually going to start off one above that. I'm gonna start at 3733 megahertz. Going to go over here to settings. I'm going to apply and restart. Once we're booted up, we just need to run OCCT. You're not gonna see anything down here in the CPU section or the GPU section about your RAM overclock. The only way you're gonna know that it is not stable is you're gonna blue screen. And it usually does it within about the first 10 seconds of running OCCT. So you don't really need to run a full 30 second automatic test. So I feel this is pretty stable. I'm gonna go ahead, close OCCT out. I'm going to power this off by pushing the P button, power it back on, hold down the delete key or F2. I'm gonna go back over to RAM OC and I'm gonna go up to 3,800 megahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that and restart. And this is pretty much any type of overclocking. It's all about making a change and then running a test to make sure it's stable. So we're gonna run another OCCT test. I'm only gonna let it run for about 10 seconds. So we're gonna wait until it gets down to about um, 15 seconds left. And if it hasn't blue screened by now, we should be stable, so let's go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna power this off, power it back on, hop into the BIOS, back to RAM OC. We're gonna bump this up to 3866 and do the same thing, applies changes and restart, and yes. And back to the OCCT test. We'll let this run again. We have to wait for it to get past the monitoring section. So we're getting close to that 15 second mark. We should be good. Let's go ahead and close that out. We'll power it down, power it back on, back into the BIOS. And let's go up to 4,000 megahertz. Back to settings, apply and restart and yes. Okay, back into OCCT again. Let's get it running. And now we're in the testing phase. We'll give it its 10 seconds.
And I think we're in the clear, so let's go ahead, close that out. We will power it back down, power back on, and back into the BIOS. We'll go back to RAM OC. We're going to try 4133 megahertz. So let's go ahead and apply and restart. And now we're going to see what this does. So let's start OCCT back up. Let's turn it on. And we will see what happens. All right, we still seem pretty stable. Let's close that out. We'll power this machine down and back on and back into the BIOS again. Back to RAM OC. Let's go to 4266. We're gonna go ahead, apply and restart. Like I said, this is a lot of trial and error. So there's a lot of restarting. So let's go back into OCCT. We'll get it started back up again. And we'll see how far we get. This seems to be a pretty decent couple of sticks of RAM here. So let's close that out. We'll power it off, power it back on, and back into the BIOS. All right, we're up to 4,300. Let's go ahead and apply and restart. All right, OCCT, let's get it running. Let's see what happens. Again, no blue screen. We seem to be quite stable at this point. We're down to 15 seconds. We'll close that out. Let's power it down, power it back on, and go back into the BIOS. Back to RAM OC. Let's go to 4,400 megahertz. We'll apply and restart. And let's start up OCCT. Oh, there we go. We have got our blue screen. So this is from pushing the RAM too far. So let's go ahead and power it down. We will power it back on. We'll go back into the BIOS. Now we do have a couple of options here. We could either bump up the RAM voltage and see if we can go further. I don't really care to do that. I think 4,300 megahertz is fair. So I'm gonna bump it back from 44 back to 4,300 megahertz. We will apply those changes and restart. And then if we wanna make doubly sure that it is perfectly stable, we can go ahead and run 3D Mark just as a another test to run. I'm going to step away and let this run and make sure we don't get any blue screens. If it does blue screen, I will come back. And if it makes it to the end, I will come back once it's done. All right, so that test ran without a hitch. Our RAM is nice and stable. We can't discuss overclocking without mentioning Silicon Lottery. What is Silicon Lottery? It is basically some computer components will overclock better than others. And if you get one that overclocks exceptionally well, then you have won the Silicon Lottery. Silicon Lottery exists both in the real world and in PC Building Simulator. If you would like to find out more about the Silicon Lottery, there are lots of resources on the internet, and I encourage you to seek those out. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified as soon as a video goes live. There are other creators making content for this YouTube channel, so be sure to go and check out the other content available. Also, if you want more PC Building Simulator content, be sure to check out my channel as I have tons and tons of content available. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next episode. As long as we feel